Hey, everybody, come on in. How's everybody doing this evening? Make sure you guys check the link in the chat as well. Um, I'll put the link in the chat for our uh, Prime Tanya's Prime Time Reviews Facebook group. Make sure you go over there after you click the link, request to join the group, and I will add you to the group. But how's everything going? Everybody have a great Sunday. Hope it all is well, all is well. Well, I got a chance to finally um, go live today. <laughs> I was actually supposed to go live at 9 p.m., but when I got off of work um, from my part-time job, it's like really cold here. We had a snowstorm last night. It was like uh, rain, then sleet, then snow, and it turned into ice, and it was a mess. It was a mess. And um, I went to church today. When I got off of work, I was able to get in my car because, you know, sometimes when it's really cold and snow and ice and everything, it's hard for you to open your car doors. I was able to get in my car, but once I got in my car and I sat down to shut my door, my door wouldn't shut because the car panel was just really, really cold. So I had to mess around with it and call my dad and dad, my door won't shut. What am I supposed to do? And he tried to tell me what to do over the phone. But anyway, and then the parking lot was so dark. <laughs> oh my God, this was a mess. The parking lot was so dark and I closed up the uh, nursing home when I get off at night. So I have to close up. So basically I lock myself out when I close up, which is what we normally do. And so I couldn't get back in. He's talking about go in and get some hot water and pour it on the side of your door. I'm like, Oh Lord, I can't do that. So I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to drive and do my best to hold the car door shut. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. And then the, the streets is slippery and I'm like trying to hold on to the car. The door keeps flying open. I'm like, oh my God. It was a mess, y'all. But anyway, I made it to a gas station where it was really, really bright. And it was probably like, I don't know, eight blocks down the road. And I made it to a gas station, kept messing with it and jiggling it. And finally, I managed to shut my door. But anyway, so that's why I'm late tonight. So forgive me. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys had a better day than I had. Actually, my day was pretty okay besides that little incident. So, you know, it is what it is. But everything worked out fine. I got home safe and sound. Did fall out the car on the way home. <laughs> but anyway, what y'all think about... um? The last episode of uh, Married to Medicine, I thought it was kind of interesting. <laughs> a couple of things I thought were kind of interesting. Overall, I thought it was a good episode. You know, this year, um, I mean, this season has actually been pretty good. So, you know, even um, I've been kind of comparing this to uh, what was the other show? The Love and Hip Hops and the TIs and, you know... Housewives of Atlanta, and this this is one of my it's one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite uh, prime time reality shows this season. So, anywho, um, the show was called actually this is season six, episode thirteen, and the show was titled "Sleep Numbers Gone Wrong." Well, actually, that's what I titled it. It's really called "Sleep Numbers Gone." <laughs> But anywho, um, the show has started off uh, with Simone and her husband, and um, lately they have been, well, you know they were supposed to get a divorce, and then they worked things out, decided to try to stick it out, make it work. So they've done a lot of counseling. They were still in separate households. But finally, 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 they are all going to be under the same roof again. So congratulations to them. They managed to work out their situations, um, you know, their marriage and everything. Because I was like, dang, it took y'all long enough. But then I realized, you know what? Um, it might have seemed like they were still, that they were getting along when the season started, at least from way better from the last season definitely way better they were talking more and you know uh 
dealing with the kids together, still living in separate houses. But I know they had to make sure that they worked out all their relationship problems, you know, concerns, you know, that made them split up in the first place before just jumping back into the same household. So, you know, they finally back at that place and they're thinking of, you know, celebrating, having a celebration. So they're going to throw a party. Um, I don't remember if they titled it anything. A we're back under the same house. <laughs> I think that's what they called it. We're back under the same roof party or something like that. But anywho, um, I can tell, you know, with Cecil, like there's definitely been a big difference, a big change from him since last season. Like, I'm telling you, it just seems like he's pouring out, you know, just pouring over with a lot of love lately. Uh, the love that she was missing, you know, like all during last year. I mean, they've been living in different houses for like nine months. And all that time, you know, when they were separated, you know, before they even lived in separate houses, she kept complaining to him about you not showing me that much love. I can't tell that you love me. You never say that you love me. And he never showed it. He was just like, all the time she wanted to talk to him, he's just like, uh, uh, like he's just looking at her like, uh, you know, like the, the Charlie Brown when they be talking and somebody's like pretending like they're listening. All you hear is, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> But anyway, you know, I can tell a big difference in him. It just seems like they're just reconnected a lot. But um, when he told her that he's just going to move all his clothes into the basement, that's when I can really tell, <laughs> like really tell. Because she was like, I mean, it was like she was like, you saw the, heard the sound of the music was like, oh, like she... <laughs> Like, she couldn't believe it. She was floored. And, like, how many men, though, you know, who are going to just voluntarily move all their clothes to the basement without a peep of disagreement? Not many. Not many. They're going to be like, I'm sorry, babe, but we got to share this closet. You're going to have to put some of your some of your overflow into another room or in the basement or, you know, something like that. <laughs> but anyway, you can tell right there just, I mean, it's just a big change in him, really, definitely. Because I know about a year ago, he that probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> that probably wouldn't have happened. But anyway, um, now with Heavenly. She had paid a visit to Quad um, because Quad wanted to discuss the bracelet that Heavenly gave her on the couple's trip. Now, um, Heavenly, Heavenly gave her a bracelet on the couple's trip. Keyword, couple's trip. <laughs> Heavenly, <laughs> but first of all, first of all, why she come over there asking for a meal? Like Heavenly is always hangry, not hungry. She's always hangry. She's coming over there talking about where the food at, where the scallops at. I thought I was going to have some kind of, you know, hors d'oeuvres, something, chips and dip. Quad, she's like, you know what? I no longer really have to cook anymore. I'm not married anymore. I'm a single woman. I cook when I want to. And Heavenly was like, well, still, I cook for my husband, you know, because Quad was like, it's been a long day. I ain't, I ain't trying to cook, girl. I ain't trying to cook. And then Heavenly goes on to say, well, you know what? Even when I have long days, long, hard days, I still come home and cook for my man. Um... It ain't like that in every household, Heavenly. <laughs> it ain't like that in every household. Uh-uh. Hubby better know how to cook or hubby better order out because um, cooking three, four, five course meals every day, mm, that ain't usually how I do. Especially if you have a very, very hard, you know, time-consuming job. Like, I can't even see how she does it. But anywho, um, you know, as a dentist and all. But anywho, um, quad. She was basically like, I don't know. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this. Because when she made that comment about after the trip to Antigua, she can definitely tell who her real friends are. Like, because of the bracelet. All because Heavenly gave her that bracelet. Now, I don't... I don't quite agree with her statement. Like, first of all... Um, the gift exchange was for the couples, the couples, they were the ones who were supposed to gift each other with a gift, you know, a thoughtful gift. 
Um, so me personally, I don't feel that she should be basing her friend's loyalty on that gift exchange. First of all, like I said, this was a couple's trip. And even though she didn't come with Greg, whom she's divorcing, it's still a couple's trip. And the couples were supposed to gift their mates with something thoughtful. She did have a choice to go on the trip or not to go on the trip. And she chose to go. But that doesn't make them obligated to buy her a gift. I don't know. I don't know why she felt that way. And besides, I thought at the end of the trip that all the ladies was good. You know, like, like Heavenly said, we didn't kill each other. You know, we had a few arguments. We didn't kill each other. We all left Antigua, you know, in one piece. And we threw everything in that shell. Remember, they put everything in the shell. They wrote what they was getting rid of, getting rid of um, of hate, getting rid of, you know, baggage, getting rid of, you know, all kind of things that they were, you know, getting rid of. They put it in the shell. They tossed it in the ocean. So, so uh, Heavenly was like, we threw it all in the ocean, right? So come on now, quad. <laughs> Let's not be petty. Let's not be petty. Do not base your friend's loyalty on a gift because Heavenly didn't even have to buy you a gift. And then what would you say? None of them are really your friends because you didn't get a gift? Mm, nah, I don't agree with that. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I'll be tripping every time. Like seriously, y'all, seriously, y'all. My family is from the South. I might stay in Omaha, Nebraska, but all my family is from the South. Some of us just migrated North years and years ago. But I really be tripping every time I find out that a Southern woman cannot cook. Like, how you live in the South and you cannot cook? You live in the South all your life and you cannot cook? Like, okay, Dr. Jackie... She had to call over Dr. Simone and Dr. Heavenly to help her prepare, prepare a meal for her husband. Now, I understand she wanted it to be special. Um, and I guess she felt like she needed backup, which was probably a good thing. <laughs> but anyway, she felt like she needed backup. So she called Dr. Simone and Dr. Heavenly. But Dr. Jackie, she almost, oh my God, I was gagging. She almost knocked me out of my chair when she said she didn't even know if her oven could go higher than 350 degrees. Like, I'm thinking, when is the last time you used that piece of equipment? <laughs> Dr. Jackie, you don't know if your oven goes higher than 350 degrees. You stay in that big, beautiful house and you have that beautiful kitchen with that expensive stove and you don't know if it goes over 350 degrees. Girl, girl. It's obviously she does not use her oven. But then um, Dr. Simone, she was like, what you do is... You push the bake button, and then you push 375, <laughs> you big dummy. <laughs> I was hollering. I was hollering, I tell you, when she called her a big dummy. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> then Dr. Heavenly's nasty ass, she came up in there just knowing she's about to throw down because evidently her hubby eats a great dinner and some scrumptious cookies, cookies, every single evening. So she definitely knows how to feed her man. <laughs> Milk and cookies. <laughs> but then they move over to Toya and Eugene. And I cannot wait till their home is complete. Like, it looks like it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, It's going to be everything. I can, I can just tell. And it appears like it's going to be rather massive as well. But when Toya found out that because of the grand size of the house, the builders claim that they have to downsize an area in the basement um, because, you know, they'll need more space for the utility room, which Eugene is trying to explain to her, you know, wife. This is why they got to do this, that, and the third. She's upset, talking about, well, that ain't my problem. That ain't my problem. Girl, if you don't just work with the people, they trying to work with you in your big two-floor, two-story closet that's taking up three-fourths of the basement. <laughs> but anyway, Eugene was like, baby, let's just, let's just skip the whole wine cellar, you know, for now. 
You know, we, we don't, we, we can do that later. We can do that later. But she was acting like, you know, no, I don't want to let go of the wine cellar. Are we still going to get it? Are you promised we're really going to get it later? I'm like, I don't know why she just won't sacrifice some of her two story closet, you know, just sacrifice a little more if she really wants that darn wine cellar. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But on the other hand, I guess it's a good thing that she believes clothes are much more important than alcohol. Or is it not? <laughs> because you know, some of y'all would have been like, okay, baby, I don't need all that closet space because for real, me, myself, personally, I would love to have a wine cellar in my basement. Just go down there and just pick any bottle of wine from, I mean, I have like little wine holders, you know, everybody has them. You sit them on the counter and they got holes in them where you stick all your bottles in, or you might have one that stand up off the ground. I have some of those too, you know, but a wine cellar, mm, mm. but again, again, I don't drink that much anyway, anyway, <laughs> but okay. Now, mind you, Dr. Jackie, she was told by her marriage counselor to make a dinner for Curtis. I guess Curtis is supposed to have a king day. He's supposed to have his own day where she treats him like a king and serves him and cooks for him. And, you know, he gets wine and dine and pampered, you know, and all that. Things you should do occasionally for your hubby and vice versa. They should do it for you too, ladies. <laughs> Treat you like a queen. And actually, like um, they said... That stuff should be done, you know, all the time. Not necessarily just treating them like royalty every day, you know, at their feet for every day, beck and call. But, you know, you should always treat your spouse like a queen or a king. But, anywho, um, she was supposed to do it, though, booty bucket naked. But for the sake of us viewers, of course, they couldn't go that route. So she chose the route of, you know, wearing this nice nude bodysuit and I must say Dr. Jackie was snatched. She was wearing a mess out of that bodysuit y'all. I was like okay get it girl. It has her little you know apron wrapped around like she done cooked something <laughs> like she done cooked something <laughs> but um, Dr. Jackie you know she really is a beautiful woman. You know beautiful intelligent smart. I don't know what he was thinking when he stepped out on her but I guess, you know, in his defense, she was, you know, you remember back then, last season, Dr. Jackie, she always dives so much, so far, so deep into her, you know, business, into her work, into her clinic, you know, her, you know, so she wasn't paying a lot of attention to him and he could have deserved a lot more attention, but still, I'm like, mm. Anywho, she's beautiful. But <laughs> when he kept on ringing that doggone bell, I was like, oh my God, how many times is he going to ring that bell? And he's talking about, um, he had the king hat on, he had the king robe on, and she gave him a bell. And um, I was like, man, if he keep abusing that bell, she going to try to make him swallow that dog thing. <laughs> He kept calling her, like, ding, 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 ding. As soon as she turned around, ding, 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 ding. She was like, okay, my king. Okay, my king. And you can tell when Dr. Jackie about to get pissed off. She was going from like Susie Homemaker. <laughs> she went from like Susie Homemaker to like, um, okay, watch it. Watch it. <laughs> watch that bell. But anyway, um, with Heavenly, again, we are back for another anger management session. Mm, I need a drink. But we are back for another anger management session with Dr. K. And I swear, y'all, it'd be seeming like every time Dr. Heavenly visits Dr. K, does it not seem like she's having a breakthrough? Like, he done just worked a miracle on her. She be feeling all good, like she's about to go out into the world. It's a brand new world, you know. And then, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what be happening, but this session, Dr. K, he has her close her eyes because she told, okay, well, she told him about the incident in Antigua when her and Mariah got into it, you know, just another incident to me. But anywho, um, I guess this one really, you know, pissed Mariah, I mean, pissed uh, Heavenly off. 
And so he was like, you know what? I want you to close your eyes, take these breaths. You know, he, he's basically having her meditate, you know, close your eyes. Take me back to that moment when Mariah pissed you off <laughs> at the couple's retreat. And she claimed that she went off because she don't like being disrespected. And she also collates that situation with what happened with Mariah with several incidents she had with her sister when she was a child. And once she's brought back to her subconscious state, she tells Dr. K that she thinks it's time. And this is how she, this is Emily. I think it's time, Dr. K. I really think it's time, Dr. K. It's time for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Y'all, I was cracking the hell up. <laughs> oh, Dr. Heavenly, she be, I mean, one minute is like, she talks like this sweet little old church girl. Then the next minute, she's like, yo, mama's a... <laughs> I'm like, okay, somebody bipolar here? Maybe, maybe not. But anywho, she was like, in the name of Jesus, it's time for forgiveness. <laughs> And in Jesus' name, I hope that is what really happens. <laughs> I hope what, that's what really happens. But then, um, oh, Lord, <laughs> the ladies, the ladies. Um, question for y'all ladies. How do y'all feel about the man cave scene with the bartenders? How do y'all feel about that? Now, I know... Some might think that Simone was wrong as hell for not warning the ladies that their men are going to be downstairs with some strange women who are ready to serve. <laughs> but <laughs> for real, I thought it was kind of, I don't know, I thought it was kind of cute. Like, you know, the whole setup and thing. The ladies were down there. They had their little glitter on, you know. They weren't too overly done. They weren't too overly beautiful either. I mean, they were nice looking women, but it wasn't like they were like, I don't know, like drop dead gorgeous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not that they were ugly or nothing. They were nice looking women, you know, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, I thought it was kind of nice. She wanted them to feel, you wanted the men to feel really comfortable, you know, so she had them taken care of by the bartenders. So the fellas can just go downstairs and kick back and chop it up. And I think she mainly did that too because, I mean, how many times do they get together and it all starts off all fun and, you know, and everything. And then next thing you know, the ladies is at each other's throat and the men's is over here like, oh my God, here we go again. We can't never have it, you know. So this time, you know, she had the bartenders down there, say some of drinks and everything. They had the roulette game plan. You know, they was having a good time. So, I don't know. I thought it was cool. But y'all let me know what y'all think about it. But um, I do believe <laughs> that some of the wives would have rather they had not been there. Like um, Contessa and Heavenly, for example. Um, Contessa was like, what kind of shenanigans do we have going on up and through here? And Heavenly walked straight up to the bartenders talking about, what are y'all doing here? Like, what are y'all doing here? That's heavenly. See, I'm, I'm, I'm getting heavily down real good. <laughs> but she was like, what are y'all doing here? Then she called them hoes. She was like, uh-uh. They downstairs with them hoes. Do y'all know y'all men are downstairs with some hoes? I'm like, oh, heavenly, you dragging it out now. <laughs> she was dragging it out. <laughs> but then Simone was like, calm down, heavenly. Calm down. The men are okay. Ain't nothing going to happen to them. They are not going to be touched. You don't have to worry about it. But when Heavenly told Dr. Jackie, you know, Dr. Jackie probably wouldn't mind, you know, about these shenanigans. But, um, you know, because she's, you know, she freaky like that anyway. I was thinking, okay, before they even went to the green screen, before they even went to the green screen, I'm thinking, freaky how? Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Dr. Jackie is so not, so not. I mean, I'm like, what? Heavenly, you've been on this show. Like, you've been on the show. We've only been watching the show. And we know that Dr. Jackie is not heavy, not freaky. But anywho, anywho. And then uh, when it went to the green screen, that's when Curtis was like, uh, you know, Dr. Jackie might have said that you uh, freaky. 
but you know you are not. <laughs> he was like, you are not freaky at all. I'm like, dang, you don't blast her out on, you know, national TV. But, but she, she ain't, she ain't freaky. If anybody's freaky, it's probably, I'll probably say Dr. Heavenly is the freakiest. And then under that, it'd probably be Toya. I'm going to put them two, like, you know, neck and neck. Yeah, I'm going to put them neck and neck. But do y'all agree with Toya when she told the ladies? I, did, I didn't, I'm, but I'm asking y'all. Do y'all agree with Toya when she told the ladies, from now on, only couples are allowed on the couples trip? Because Quad was like, I don't give a good darn if I am single. If there's a couple's trip, then I'm going. And Toya, I, I don't know if she... I don't, it was kind of obvious that she was concerned because she mentioned that some of the men in the group have, you know, they have had some infidelity issues. They cheated on their wives, point blank. So I'm wondering, like, are you intimidated by the newly single quad? By this newly single quad, are you intimidated? Do you think she might try to push up on one of y'all dudes? Like, I don't know. Toya got to explain this. I mean, she got to explain this. Then she started throwing shade towards quad, talking about um whoever she dates or whenever she gets a new man, he better already have kids because quad is going to make him worry, make him wait for a long time before giving him children. But then you acting like. You intimidated by her, like there's many reasons, you know, why um, a man would want to hook up with Quad. So which one is it, Toya? I, I, I'm, I'm inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> inquiring minds want to know. I'm like, well, I don't know. But then, like, what do y'all think? Just let me know what y'all think. I don't know. But then, you know, when it got when it came to the end, I guess they basically, you know, came to the conclusion. That quad is still gonna be there on them couple trips, whether she's single, married, divorced, engaged, whatever, <laughs> whatever, without a husband or not, she gonna be there. <laughs> and speaking of husbands, like all the fellas, um, you know, they was really missing Greg and Antigua. Um, you know, the ladies wanted Quad to come. Of course, they didn't want Greg to come. And the fellas, they still cool with Greg. That's their homie. That's their friend. That's their dog. And so a lot of times when they get together, Quad is around. And Greg, of course, can't come because those two don't get along. So, of course, you know, they thought of enough of him to invite him to join them the day when they were golfing. And again... I'll be cracking up every time I hear this story, but Greg had to mention it again, how Quad stole all the doggone furniture from the house after she filed divorce. <laughs> he was like, um, I came home, y'all. He was like, I came home and everything was gone. Everything was gone. And then he was like, I walked into my bedroom and my sleep number bed was missing. He was like, <laughs> okay. First he was thinking, okay, this this fool, she done stole all the doggone furniture. She done took all the front the furniture out the house while I'm gone. Okay, so what? She took all the doggone furniture. But he figured, well, you know what? At least I still got my bed. I got my sleep number bed. You know, it reclines back. You know, them things are expensive. He said it reclines. I can sit up in there and be chilling and watching the games and stuff. Nope. <laughs> She took everything, even the bed. I was like, I wonder if she took um, everything, including all the comforters, the sheets, the pillows. I mean, can he at least make a pallet on the floor? Was he able to at least make a pallet on the floor? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Did he have to leave and go get a hotel? Did he? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, anywho, that is funny. That is funny. But after that, he told Eugene, he was like, it ain't a rat shit chance in hell that they'll ever get back together. Eugene was like, really? Well, I believe in love. And he said, did you hear me? I said, it ain't a rat shit chance in hell that we'll get back together. Do you know how 
small a rat shit is. That's what Gregory did. He's like, do you know how small, how small a rat? It's it's not a rat shit chance in hell <laughs> that they'll get back together. <laughs> so I guess, I guess they 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 both gonna move on and. I don't know how this is going to work. Like, if they don't, if they don't work it out, like I don't even know which direction I see the show going. Like, if Quad ends up getting in a relationship and he ends up getting relationship, like, what about the couples trips and things like that? Like, are they going to bring their new booze on the? I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think. You know, I like to read into stuff. Like, sometimes go too far when I'm trying to read into stuff or guess what's going to happen next. But anywho, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Again, I thought it was a pretty good episode. And this show, out of all the shows that I've been watching this season, is really one of my favorites this this season. This season. But anywho, again, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the show. Make sure if y'all did not hit that like button on the way in, Make sure y'all hit that like button and also make sure you share my live, share it on your, all your social media platforms, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, please share, please share. Thank you very kindly. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please click that, click that subscribe button. And you know, in order to get all the notifications, whenever I go live, you have to click subscribe and also click that bell right next to the subscribe button. So I hope you guys enjoyed the live and I hope you all have an enjoyable Sunday evening. And as usual, primetime squad, in the meantime and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.